And you're welcome back. You're watching TV3 New Day. Uh, today is a big news day. Today is the 11th of November. We are expecting that the Supreme Court will sit over the substantial issue um, in the parliamentary, what should I call it at this time? Um, a lot of misunderstanding going on in the House, on the floor. We hope to be able to bring you um, a live coverage of the proceedings that will go on in Parliament this morning. Time after 9 a.m. But before that, it's time for big issues. And it is during this segment that we discuss the major issues making the rounds in the news. And with only about 26 days or so to the elections, this morning we have just received a new poll from Global Info Analytics. And we're going to be talking about it. What does the poll say? What does it mean? And what do you need to know? ahead of the elections. But before that, you know you can win money on the show every weekday morning, and we start on Mondays. All you have to do is dial star 439 hash, star 439 hash, and cash out. If you are an MTN subscriber or a Telesol subscriber, this is your chance to win big on the show. Dial star 439 hash, select option two for TV3, and then follow the prompts from there. You should play at least 25 times, yeah? And then you can win 1,000 Ghana CDs on the show this morning. And we do this every weekday morning. So don't miss out any day starting today. All right. And it's only available to Telesel and MTN subscribers. If you don't use these networks, you, you are not part of this, uh, of this giveaway. So dial now and win. Dial now as I'm speaking to you. Just pick up your phone now. Let's do it together. Dial star 439 hash. Now select option two. Then select the number of times you want to play, and I recommend 25 times. And then <laughs> keep your phone beside you. We'll do the draw immediately after big issues. All right, this morning on the show. It's time for big issues. Now I'm joined in the studios by Mr. Frederick Kofi Amaya. He's an NPP National Communications team member. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning. How, How are you? you? I'm okay. Just... Um some kind of mixed feelings. Uh, yesterday, having watched the engagement by uh, the Honorable Minister for Education, yes, uh, Yaredi Chum, on Dr. Baumier's um, um, commitment to Ghana's education and the testimony that, that came out of it, for me, it gave me a feeling of sadness. And I'm scared, and at the same time, I'm hopeful. Why are you sad? I'm sad because in about 26 days, the good people of this country will go to the, to the booth. Um, to elect a government that will either protect the free SHS TVET policy or a government that will cancel it. And that, for me, is, is a bit scary and sad. Cancel or review? No, cancel it. Outright. Leave. So, for me, it scares me. But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful because I know the policy matters to a lot of Ghanaians because of its impact. As we speak now, about 5.7 million Ghanaian children or Ghanaian children have enjoyed from it. So I'm hopeful that for the sake of that policy and its impactfulness, Ghanaians will give the mandate to His Excellency Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. And that gives me that hope. And I'm also scared, um, just in case. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely scared. Because when you yeah, listen to You're not today, confident in... No, no. In no. There, there is a decision what the possibilities that, are for your candidate. There, there, there is a possibility. Ghanaians are going to make a decision about 18 million people who have registered will decide. Mm -hmm. And I cannot decide and sit here and project who will vote for who. But I'm saying that a decision will be made. And on that ballot, there will be a protection of the free SHS TVET or a cancellation of it. And I'm hopeful that Ghanaians indeed will vote for a protection and continuation and consolidation of that policy. All right. All right. Great to have you on the show. Also in the studio this morning, we're joined by Elikem um, Kotoko. He is a national deputy organizer of the NDC. Morning. Morning. Uh, How are you doing? <coughs> I could be better, you know. You could be better? You are yeah. unwell? Um, um, I mean, you wake up in the morning to find out that your, your grandmother you just visited is complaining to let you know that kerosene price, a liter, is more expensive than... A liter of V-power, a liter of diesel, a liter of petrol. It tells you our folks in the villages are even suffering. And it is more... Pain. A liter of kerosene is more, more expensive than a liter of V-power. Yeah. That is How a, much I, is a liter of kerosene? It's, about, it's hovering above 16 cities. 
and, and that is how sad it is. Mm. And then it's, it's, it's worse when you have very educated young people uh, look people in the camera and say that review means cancel. And I listen to my brother here say that he's scared because the NDC intends to cancel free assessors. I'm sorry we are becoming educated illiterates when we want to comprehend English in our own terms by our own, de our own definitions. President Mahama has stated clearly on, on many platforms that he intends to review the free SHRs. For instance, this whole unimaginable instance of making our children go to school in traffic like regimes, red, gold, green, blue, where you go to school one week and go and stay at home for three months, amongst other things, where you look at the quality of food served even our younger ones. Pardon my language, but my brother sitting here will not even serve that food to a pet he has in the house. Yet you want to tell me that the NDC has said they will come and cancel it. This is the same thing they said. You recall the luxury tax they brought when President Mahama said he was going to review it. And President Mahama has stated clearly the NDC's position is, is, is to is review and not to review. cancel. All right. I, however, only feel a bit disappointed in some of you, the media, when they say things of this nature. Don't leave it to the NDC to be the one to correct them. Well, I did ask him yes. if and, he and, and, and review it, or cancel. Because he rubbishes your intelligence when he continues in that way as well as the host. Because review does not mean cancel in any way. And it does not require the NDC to consistently be having back and forth trying to explain to them as if, excuse my language, that they are educated idiots who do not understand reading. No, no, that, let's, no, let's not no, use that no, language. No, my, my let's sister. not use that language. No, I will do that because, no. let, me, let me be, let's, you see, now. You can make the point now, without yes, using that language. Point. It is part of my point. Does it make sense to you that a person who has gone to school through secondary to tertiary education, tertiary education, I believe, even an ambassador for some, of some sort, will sit before you and for national television and also be telling you that what the the lame man is saying out there that we should try to correct them. And he is also leading link credence to that, that the NDC intends to cancel free assistance. Where exactly did the NDC say we're going to cancel free assistance? Exactly. Those are the concerns that need to be raised. People will be voting based on bread and butter issues. How much is a liter of petrol today? How much is a bowl of kinky? <laughs> what is the standard of living of the people? These are the things you need to speak about. If you do not have anything to talk about, for eight years you are still talking about just one policy. It means you are a failure. No wonder the president is somewhere unveiling his own statue, congratulating himself over a project that has not even been completed. Such shallowness is, is how low leadership has sunk in this country. And All we right. cannot entertain that because, look, when we continue treating these things with velvet gloves, it is we, the Ghanaians, who suffer, and we are seeing the suffering we are going, and we cannot continue to entertain that. All right. All right. Uh, we're also joined this morning by Courage Nobi. He's a deputy director for Policy Movement for Change. Good morning, Courage. Good morning. You're welcome uh, to the show. I hope you are well. Very well, by the grace of God. All right. Um, and, uh, but not outside the collective reality of the ordinary Ghanaian today. We thank God for health. We thank him for uh, the opportunity to again contribute to the betterment of our society. And so greetings from Alan John Kwejo Chamatin, the uh, gentleman par excellence, um, a politician who has no blemish or blot, a politician who has been in the forefront of our place for almost 40 years, without any track record of rot whatsoever. He's the one who is promising to transform this Ghanaian economy, transform our Ghanaian experience to ensure that we're able to leapfrog, to join the civilized nations of the world. Our present circumstances does not suggest that we are on a trajectory to that destination. Mm. And, and the kind of um, discourse uh, or rhetoric that we are seeing this morning is part of the challenge in, in heading to that direction. The extreme partisanship that we find in this country, the extreme uh, uh, mindsets of the persons who run these two major political parties that have run the affairs of this country since 1992 with this winner-take-all syndrome. And so whenever you hear some of these arguments, it is because certain segments of the Ghanaian society believe that when this party is in power, we are cut off almost completely from opportunities. When the opposite party is in power, everybody is equally what, cut off. And so what Alain Martin presents is an opportunity to correct that anomaly. A brilliant opportunity to say, you know what, we have to build the Ghanaian society as a whole, not right. as parts, you know. And that is why we wake up every morning, we go out there. But have you seen the favorite uh, vocabulary on social media? What's the favorite week? vocabulary? Aghast. What? Aghast. Aghast. Yes. What does it mean? Aghast. Um, 
de facto Prime Minister, if I may, uh, Gabriel Chodaku expressed <laughs> his disappointment <laughs> at the businessman, um, Daniel Macaulay. But of Magdan Group but, for... But, man, I, no, I, but I, I, I think I, you need to correct him. You don't is, have to allow it, this it to is. go on. There is no de facto prime minister in this country. Okay, I, I can allow insult on my person to go because I do, I'm not here to represent myself. I'm here to represent my party and my government. But that statement that he made is, is incorrect. Is it, is it so you have to correct him. Yes. Do you have is a de facto prime minister? I, I, I think, I think we'll put... We'll no, put I right. think it's not about being the okay. No, but, but it's, it's not correct. Being, it's not. It's, it's not correct. It's not correct. All right. So don't right. allow it to go. But I, I think it is. It is important that we respect and each other. I want to believe that you were using it lightly. Absolutely, and but, I don't know, but, know why you would even. But if it's offends someone, no, but, then you just take no, it. No, 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 but, but I, I don't. Right. I don't. Yes, I don't. Yes, factual, so, so, so we'll just leave it at that. All right, let's just leave it. No, but let's just not. Let's not major in this. I will not. I know. Let's leave it at that. Certainly, but my my issue is that you don't sit here and make. Yes, I mean this is a no. What's the meaning of the fact? Maybe if you understand the fact, then you'll be fine. This is a small issue that shouldn't exactly shouldn't generate debate. No, but the more important point I wanted to make is that when you have have a government that has not been deliberate about creating an enabling environment for businesses on the basis of equal opportunity mm -hmm. but select opportunity for a few then you have the kind of Magdan Gabi or Chedakun a tantrum that we saw <laughs> on social media and that is the kind of policy direction that's the kind of governance that kind of politics that we must put behind us so if he's uncomfortable because of that point, I understand him. Because John Nobu Aduchu, Minister for Education, looked at Ghanaians in the face and told us that young Ghanaians wear kokonte, I mean in quote, mm -hmm. to school. And that very soon, it will be a thing of the past. Forgetting that whilst he was deputy minister, his predecessor minister, Matthew Poku Prempe, changed Ghanaians' school uniform. What happened? This is just under six years ago. The kind of policy incoherence, the lack of credibility in our policy formulation and advance. Then they now turn up all of a sudden, kumbaya, with a new convenient narrative, like the minister did, like the way the party representative is doing here in this morning. It's the very reason why we are where we are. And it's All the right. kind of politics we must put behind us. All right. Let's 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 get back to the issues. Let's get back to the issues um, because of which we have come here this morning. This morning, there's a new poll. Um, today, 11th November, is the date on the documents we have just received. The National Phone Tracking Poll 2024 presidential election. The polling period is between the 4th of November and the 8th of November. And this poll says that John Dramani Mahama is on course to win the December election with no runoff expected. And this is according to this new poll. Now, I'll just read um, the opening paragraph for you and a couple of paragraphs, just so you have an idea what is contained in this document. A new poll by Global Info Analytics shows voters' displeasure with how Nana Ekufuado is doing his job as president. The president's approval rating has taken a nosedive compared to previous weeks, um, as only 28% approve of his performance, with 65% disapproving. The poll shows that, with the exception of NPP voters, all other party affiliates disapprove the president. And then I'm going to go to the first paragraph of the next page. Uh, the leader of the main opposition... John Dramani Mahama continues to lead in the race to replace His Excellency President Ekufuado in 2025. His Excellency J.D. Mahama leads with 52%. His Excellency J.D. Mahama leads with 52%. His Excellency Dr. Baumia, 41.3%. Alan Chermating, 2.3%. Nana K. Bediaku, 4.1% and others 0.4%. Alan Chamatin, according to the poll, is the biggest gainer during the period as he improves in Akan regions. And then finally, the poll suggests that 51% of voters say their economic condition has worsened compared to last year. 21% of the voters say their economic condition has not changed, while 28% say it has improved. And the economy, 
jobs and education are the three main concerns for voters. The economy and jobs remain stable at 75% and 69% respectively, and voters' concern for education has now elevated to nearly 52% from 46%. And gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to just give me a few minutes before we get into this to um, speak to Mr. Musa Dankwa, his executive director and head of the global of global research at um, Global Info Analytics, just to give us some proper insights into, into this before we get into the conversation proper. Mr. Musa Dankwa, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have just received this document. Mr. Musa Dankwa, yes, are you there? Yes, just this morning. Yes. I'm uh, here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So we have just received this. I've tried to read um, just a few of the paragraphs um, which stand out for me. But can you, can you give us um, an, an overview of this report? Right. Um, this is a telephone poll that was carried out between on the 4th November and 8th November. Okay. We sampled about 2,586 voters across all the 16 regions, of which 35% of the sample were MP, 33 were NDC, 18% were floating voters, other parties 3%, and 11% did not tell us their party affiliation. Now, if you look at the numbers we have checked out, uh, the key highlights in the poll suggest that about 62% of voters believe Ghana is headed in the wrong direction. 27% said right direction, and 11% did not have an opinion. If you look at the approval of the president, 28% approve and 65% disapprove. And then if you look at uh, people who are saying that the government has done well, um, it is 31%. Those who say average is 15%, but 49% said we've done poorly or very poor. Now, on the question of the economy and how they've been impacted, 28% of them said that it's gotten better compared to the last 12 months. But 21% said it's the same, nothing has changed for them. But 51% said it's gotten worse. So you can see that the economy continues to drag, and then also the uh, view by Ghanaians as to where the country is headed is also uh, looking very grim indeed. All right. Now, this is a telephone poll. Yes. And um, I'm, I'm just looking at some of the numbers that you've, you've churned out. Can you, can you tell us what the methodology was? Just so we understand, um, the sample size was 2,543. Is that correct? Uh, in 2,586 uh, were called, but 2,543 actually ended the survey end to end. Completion rate. That's about 98.3%. All right. Now, the, num the numbers, the calls were placed randomly into a pool that has MPP voters, NDC voters, uh, floating voters, other parties, and those who don't disclose their party affiliation nationwide. And then those numbers were called randomly from the system. The margin of error for this survey is 1.9%, plus or minus. Okay. Okay. And the conclusion of the survey is that John Romani Mahama is on course to win the elections without a runoff. Yes. Um, if you look at the people who are going to vote, who are committed to vote, Mahama leads with 52%, Baumia okay. 41.3%, uh, okay. Alan 2.3%, Bediaco 4.1%, and others 0.4%. Now, if you look at the party affiliation of uh, these uh, voters and how they are voting, uh, you realize that among people who say they are MPP openly, 3% intend to vote for Mahama, 95% intend to vote for Baumia, 1% for Alan, and 1% for Bediaco. But for those who say they are NBC, 98% are voting for Mahama. 1% will vote for Baumia, and another 1% would vote for Mahama. But crucially, among the floating voters, Mahama has taken a significant lead with 69% of support among the floating voters. Hmm. Baumia is down to 11%, Alan 6%, and Bediaku 13%. So you can see that Bediaku is now doing better among floating voters than any of the candidates other than John Baham. Uh, the summary also cites Alan Chamating as the biggest gainer 
in this poll? Yes, because if, if you look at the changes between the period, Alain Chermatin, uh over the period went up nearly 1%, 0.8%. While Muhammad dropped 0.7% over the last week, uh, Baomea gained 0.3%. Uh, Bediaku lost 0.1 0, 0 and others lost 0 0.3, but Alan gained 0.8%. That's right. quite huge. Yes, that's, that's quite a, a number. Is there a percentage of undecided voters, people who have still not made up their minds? Yes, the numbers suggest that about 13.4 said they are yet to make their, their mind. All right. Now, if you look at those who said they had to make their mind, um, most of them are floating voters. Okay. So if they do vote, if they do decide to vote, uh, to vote on the day or when they decide, we believe they will decide around 70% for Muhammad. And that would put him way ahead. So okay. what we are showing now mm -hmm. is a very worst case for Muhammad. They could do much more than what we are telling in the polls. What you are giving us today is a worst case scenario for Muhammad. We believe, we believe it is his flaw. All right. Yes. Uh, do you anticipate or do you think that um, voters might change their minds before December 7th? And what, what are some of the things that can lead to this change of mind? Look, um, let's look at those who said they might change their mind. Only 7% of voters say they are likely to change their minds. 82% said no, they block their vote. And 11% are neutral. So technically, if you look at it, only 18% may be available. But for sure, only 7%. I mean, this 7% cannot change anything. We believe the race is locked, and the person who lives in the poll will win the elections. You sound in terms very of what sure. might change. No, we, we've seen quite a lot of data. I mean, okay. we have seen what you, uh, what, what you have seen. And look, among those who say that uh, they are undecided, about 70% or more are saying that their living condition has worsened in the last 12 months. If somebody says it's undecided, but in the last 12 months, his condition has worsened. How do you think he will vote? Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. All right. Um, I, I'm going to ask you a final question, which actually has come in from a viewer who wants to find out from you. He says, now, please, please ask him, when they are sampling their people, do they consider their party affiliations? How do they decide who should, they should call? And compared to the past elections, how different is this data? What have you noticed? All right. We have, over the last two years, gathered random interview in the field. And we've come to the conclusion that for those who say they are MP, they are about 35% average. Those who say they are NDC, 33%. Floating voters, about 18 to 19%. 3% other parties. And 11% are not telling us which part they support. So we believe these are the averages. So we have data of full phone numbers of those who say they are MPP, those who say they are NDP. So we draw the sample based on the average party affiliation nationally, and we call that okay. number. All right. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Musa Dankwa, for first sharing this uh, poll and also for speaking to us this morning. We're grateful. My pleasure. All right. That was Mr. Musa Dankwa of Global Info Analytics, who have just sent um, the published a new national phone tracking poll on the 2024 presidential elections, which they conducted between the 4th to the 8th of November, was published just this morning, just less than 25 minutes ago. And it says that John Dramani Mahama is on course to win the December elections with no runoff expected. None whatsoever. And I see a lot of your messages coming in. This morning, I promise I'm going to read as many as possible before um, we say goodbye on the show this morning. So let me just read a couple of them before I speak to my guests in studio. Um, this one says, good morning now. Um, this, this poll is too final and definitive. We shouldn't encourage conversations like this um, ahead of the elections. And this one says, wow, the numbers are staggering. Will they publish the raw data? Uh, well, I, I believe this poll is now available online, and so you can you can find it. I'll let you know exactly where to find it. But let me come to you, Kofi. How does this strike you? Well, um, first of all, we, as the New Patriotic Party, we accept credible posts and research into issues that really will determine how Ghanaians will vote. Yes. So we do not take lightly some of these things. Um, that is number one. On a personal level, um, um, as a scholar, I believe in research. 
Um, but sometimes some of these research uh, are suspects, especially um, one coming from uh, Musa Dankwa. Um, Why do you say that? Because when you look at some polls before this particular one, more so when in one of his polls he um, suggested that um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia will get 28% in Greater Accra. That, 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 that is unlikely and that will never happen. And for me, that is not credible. Uh, based it, on what? Based on, the, based on the records. In fact, when you look at even in 1992, when we had just come out of a military rule going into democracy and President or J.J. Rawlings was even so popular and so powerful, the MPP got 37%. Okay? The MPP has never done below even 40% after 1992. So for you to say 28% in Greater Accra, for me, is suspect. And I don't believe in that. Number two, for you to conduct a poll in Ophori Chrome in Ashanti region and conclude that Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia in that constituency will get 0%. 0%. Alain Which poll are you referring to? Oh, the, the, there was a poll that he conducted in a uh, Ophori Chrome constituency. Which do you, One do you, of his polls. He's done many polls. I think monthly. I want to know on, the, one, the particular one you're I'm talking to. about Ophori Chrome constituency. It, it was a poll only for Ophori Chrome yes, constituency. Yes, yes, yes. And, 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 and he, he concluded that Alan Chamatin will also get 0%. That for me is suspect. And I also consider his um, sample size uh, a bit suspect. I mean, um, compared to what we have with the baseline research or survey by Professor Smatsapon, who does so with about 59,545 50, 59, people. But having said that, having said that, the issues going into this election seem to be to be similar. When you look at that of the National Civic um, Commission on Civic Education, their recent um, um, post or uh, research uh, or reports that concluded that the issues that Ghanaians are looking into are one, unemployment, infrastructure, um, health, and education. When you look at that, that was con uh, conducted by Afrobarometer, you can also conclude that they considered education, employment, health, and infrastructure. Having said this, I believe in these areas, the new patriotic party has done better than the NDC. Again, when you go into polls that have been conducted, and we have to make the point that, I mean, Musa Dankwa is not the only person who has been conducting polls, and he's not the final authority when it comes to these polls. We've had Smart, uh, Professor Smart Sapon, who conducted a survey and concluded that Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia is more popular than, than, than John Germani Mahama. Having said that, you ask me, what do I personally think? I believe that when I share an experience, especially in the United States of America, especially so in 2016, when I followed the elections keenly, every poll indicated that Hillary Clinton was winning the elections. But eventually, when they voted, we realized that even all the swing states were won by President Trump. Again, in 2024, almost all polls indicated that Kamala was going to win. He didn't win. So yes, we can have these posts, and for us, it gives us a guideline. But sometimes the credibility, especially that of Musa Dankwa... You, you don't think that his polls are credible? No. How do you give MPP 0% in the for you It doesn't happen. In fact, when you look at the... I want to know which particular poll that's, yeah, well, that's one I'll, is. I'll give you the exact date. Yeah, that will help, I'll give you that the will help this discussion. But, but are you saying that, based on all the information that you've received, this morning, I know the document just came in, so we've had in, we haven't had the opportunity to really get into it. But the insights that have been provided, you don't think that anything that has been read, or at least what I've provided to you this morning, now, is credible? Now, look, I mentioned education, which is a commonality in all the reports. The yes. report that have come in. L let me read just that part for you. Mm -hmm. The economy, jobs, and education are the three main concerns mm -hmm. for voters. Mm -hmm. The economy and jobs remain stable at 75% and 69% respectively. And voters' concern for education has now elevated to nearly 52% from 46%. Now, even before this poll came out, just engaging people on the ground through our community manifesto and through interviews and so on that we do on TV3 New Day. These three areas are key among the concerns that Ghanaians raise. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, We've been to pretty much most of the regions. And these are the issues that people are complaining about. So you don't actually don't need this poll to know this. No. 
Exactly, exactly my point. So now you look at the issues and look at the performance of each of these candidates, okay, and each of these governments that we might get in 2025. So you look at education. That is why I started this conversation by, uh, by introducing this education factor. And Ghanaians are not idiots, okay? When they make the point that the NDC will cancel free SHS, I wasn't here to, to give meaning to rhetoric as to cancellation or review. I'm giving meaning to statements that have been made by the candidate in time past. Once upon a time, he said free education is a whimsical promise of a desperate politician. And he doesn't believe in that. Other countries have attempted it and they failed. And for that matter, Ghanaians cannot do it. Then fast forward when Free SHS and TVET was introduced in 2018. He said that if a government has a commitment of finance into any sector of the economy, he as a president will not commit $2 billion at that time. Today we have made well over 9.9 .9 billion Ghana cities into Free SHS alone. He said he will not even invest $2 billion into Free SHS alone. Again, his own political party told us that Free SHS is a lie, all lie be lie, and it's a scam. So if I sit here and I make the point that they will cancel it, it, it's against the backdrop of the commitment and statement that they have made concerning free SHS. So yes, and that scares me. So it's an assumption you are making. That not, scares me. Not that and, it and has been stated and, emphatically. And, and, but I never said it has been stated emphatically. So it's an assumption you are I, making. I, I made the point that on the ballot paper, there will be an individual, a presidential candidate and a government that has shown commitment to cancelling by their words and their rhetorics their and their actions. That they they, they the organize people to go on the street and say free SHS is 419. The government or the party, political party, NDC did so. Now the other issue is infrastructure. Okay. When you do the comparative analysis and these things, Ghanaians will look at it. They'll look at a government that has invested so much into infrastructure. As we look at it, as far as roads are concerned, this government has constructed 12,830 roads as compared to Mills, Mahama, Mahama, and Misata, 4,500. They'll look at that. When you talk about health infrastructure, we have done more than any government in the 90, uh, since the Fourth Republic. You are saying these are the, the things that Ghanaians will consider in deciding who to vote exactly. for. Exactly. But then the polls are telling us something slightly different. The economy, jobs, and education are the top three considerations we that should, Ghanaians are that's making going into the elections. That Musa Dankwe's research should not be the final authority. Do you have another research or poll to And the I contrary? gave you that of um, Professor Smart um, 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 Sapo. In, that, in, in the report of Musa Dankwa, mm -hmm. he indicates that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is not popular. Okay. Not popular? So-called. Which poll are you referring to? No, I mean, to? when you look at the numbers, no, he didn't say he's not popular. No, when, I, when we talk about popularity, I mean, who Ghanaians will choose in, in, in the 2024 elections? Mm -hmm. Okay? That's he puts, the, he puts um, mm -hmm. Dr. Baumia at 41.3%. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And then Mahama at 52%. So, but when you look at Professor Smart Sapon's baseline survey with about 59,500 people, Mm -hmm. Okay, he put the popularity of an individual who Ghanaians will choose at thirty-eight percent, and that of uh, President Mahama thirty-six okay. percent. So that we should establish the fact that Musa Dankwe's research or post is not the final authority when it comes to the elections going forward. Granted, but shouldn't it draw your attention to what people are saying, because these are Ghanaians who were spoken to. Mm -hmm. So, irrespective of how you feel about Global Info Analytics or Musa Dankwa, should you not be concerned about what Ghanaians are saying? Again, I made a point that we, we, we are so critical on the issues that goes into the determination of 20, uh, 2024 elections. Okay. And I made mention of education. I stated Afrobarometer has conducted a survey and has put out the fact that Ghanaians will consider. And I mentioned that to you. Same for NCC, same for... And I'm saying that when you look at even employment, as was mentioned, about a week or so ago, the flag bearer of the MPP mm -hmm. and the vice president engaged the Ghanaian youth, itemized and put out his vision and his commitment for creating more jobs for the young people of this country. Mm -hmm. And he made mention of the fact that 2.6 million jobs have been created 
by this government okay then yesterday we engaged the good people of this country on education our commitment to our education the the, the infrastructure that we've sunk into our our education and all these and our commitment to protect more and so the free shs so when you look at the issues we have made critical attempts to address these challenges right. now I'm, i believe very soon the vice president or the flag bearer of the new patriotic party will also come out and engage Ghanaians on the economy. So okay. on all these issues that will be going, Ghanaians will consider going into the 2024 election. We take it seriously and we are making every effort to ensure that before we go into the polls, these issues will be addressed and Ghanaians will once again have the assurance in us that when they give us the mandate and the power, indeed we'll be able to restore Ghana to where it used to be and where it's supposed to all be. All right, Elikim. How do you respond to first this poll and some of the submissions that have been made um, by Kofi? Yeah, no, uh, <clears throat> first permit me to say good morning to one uh, Ghanaian who has gone on retirement and served his country so well, uh, one Mr. Francis Ahiachi in the GRA in Ho. <clears throat> you see, when it comes to polls, the basic principle underlining why polls are conducted is to give us a bird's eye view of what may happen in the future. It may not necessarily be accurate. And therefore, I want to reiterate again that I find some submissions to be that of persons who are partially educated. Because when Dr. Musa Dank Mr. Musa Dankwa is saying is that Look, I have reached out to some people. He has not reached out to all the 18 million Ghanaians. In fact, even if he reached out to all the 18 million voters, some may tell him lies. Some may not even tell him the truth. Some may abstain. But you see, in the NDC, we would always have to say we welcome such things. It does not mean that all our work and effort will be based on the poll. Because you will need to put in your own strategy and which will inform the decisions you are making, the steps you are taking, in order to also guide you. So when polls come in, it's also just add, it's an added value to what you are uh, 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 working towards. A poll may come and even be in favor of the NDC, but the NDC may still say, no, we disagree. Maybe he says you are, NDC is winning with 52%. We may say, no, per our own checks, we're expecting to win by 53%. But when you have people think that once it doesn't favor us, we must destroy it at all and then and then destroy the credibility of the person in touch and consistently rather keep mentioning one other name which is also another very discredited character then what exactly are we doing and you see just before entering your studio here uh, on the sister stations uh, 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 platform it's been revealed that even the the office of the president also has f done some research and according to them uh, there will be a runoff and Alhaji Baumia is going to win the runoff. When a party in power is beginning to tell you that there's going to be a runoff, that is a signal to tell you that they have lost hope, they have seen every signal that they have lost, and therefore let us find a way to make it look the other way. Because, look, if you're a party in power, you are in government, and you've done that well, look at the record of the NBC, NPP as well, from the 2016 election down. What are, currently, as we speak, what is the numbers in even the, the, the legislature? If you have done that well, why have the people not reposed that confidence? Or why has it not translated into even your, your, your members of parliament? But it's been 137, 137. And this, even we all know the circumstances that resulted in all of this. So you see, when polls are conducted, it serves as a guide. You're supposed to say, okay, when this is done, this is what it means. And he has stated clearly the, the, the mode he used to conduct this is, yeah. is, 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 is poll. And I am very worried. And don't forget that even... One of the other concerns, in addition to the economy, which focuses on food, uh, jobs, education, and health, is, is, is our judiciary. The Mo Ibrahim Foundation also conducted a research that still showed us that from 2017 to date, the judiciary has lost its confidence, has lost its reputation by 30%. That is an indictment, an indictment and it lays credence to what Kandapa said some time back, that some of the verdicts that our judges have been uh, given out were so suspicious. We are also in this country and we saw some of the exposés done by uh, Anas Arimiya or Anas where judges were as expensive or as cheap as just a mere goat. And so when all these things are going on, you, you do not want to be a hypocrite. 
to cherry pick as and when it favors you and when it doesn't then you say oh there's another one there that looks well we would even welcome that of dr smart sapon and look into it and see what exactly is credible what is sensible he's saying in there let's see what makes sense to us what doesn't make sense what is logical what is seen to be more politically affiliated than the other then it guides you but if you think that you want to just rubbish everything well the truth is that Characters surrounding the vice president and the, the flag bearer of the NPP are the ones who are sinking his campaign most. Because even though he is not even helping himself, which characters are you talking the about? The very people who speak for the flag bearer, the people who speak for the NPP, they are not even speaking the truth. They are not speaking the truth to him. And then he has a running mate who is supposed to also be up there. But you've listened to the running mate's utterances every now and then. Each time he speaks, it seems al Hajiba Omiya will make an effort to recruit 10 uh, voters who assure him of voting for him. The running mate goes to speak and then he takes away four of the people who now repel that they will not vote again. Then the spokesperson also come again and they make it look like no. Where are you getting I, these numbers from? Oh, no, I'm just giving you an example of, of things that is happening. And it's so scary. But I belong to the NDC and I should be happy over that. And I'm very happy over that because the way they are going about the, the conduct of their campaign and all of that, has this is the first time in history a party is in power. And people are saying that, look, if you are saying that you do A, B, C, I am asking you that you are in power. You are the head of the economic management team. The Ghanaian is unemployed and has not gotten any job. Therefore, he has resorted to betting. Now, when he bets and he loses, it is his cost. When he wins, you are saying you are charging him 10%. When he, when he, he wins and you charge that 10% and his mother calls him and says, oh, I am not well, send me some money for, for to, my medical bill. You will charge E-Levy on that same amount. After that, if you withdraw your money to go and effect some payment somewhere, you will be charged a very senseless COVID-19 levy. As if that is not even enough, if actually your, your father is a driver, or the person is even a driver and had to also drive his vehicle from another point to the other, he will have to be paying emissions tax. And the Ghanaian is telling you that, al Haji Baumia, the president once said that you have all the wisdom in this world. You are the economic messiah, the economic whiskey. Remove this tax now if it is something you agree that you are not in favor of. And this has been why they've been going on merry-go-round all this while. Because if you want to do something, you must lead by example. Show the way. Let us see you exemplifying what you claim you will do. But you come and be promising different things around the very things that are worrying Ghanaians. The Ghanaian on the street there is struggling to survive. How much is a bowl of kinky? If you want to buy tomatoes, how much does it cost? How much does it cost you to prepare soup at home? And how long will it last at home? Marriages are even breaking as a result of this. Then you hear them every day wanting to talk, doom so, free SHS, etc. What exactly has been your solutions? Tell us what the problems are. Are these the bold solutions? And it is very worrying. So when you have comments that is just aimed at rubbishing polls, I am sure and I am sorry, but that is an act of people who are partially educated. All right. Now, um, Courage, Alan Chamanting is stated to be the biggest gainer um, according to this poll, going into the elections, he's got some over 4%. Um, people saying that he is the preferred choice. How does it strike you? All right, thank you. <coughs> no, that's again, I, I think for us from the Movement for Change, um, these numbers, uh, we, we, we approach it cautiously. Okay. Um, more so because... According to the poster, his sample size is under 3,000, yes. about two, a little over 2,000, that is 2,500. If you're looking at that against 18 million voters, he also says that oh, they've been doing this for the past two years, trying mm -hmm. to track polling the last two years. If you run that against the history of our elect electoral records, and then balance this by posts like Afrobarometer, that says that 90% of the electorate say that they will go for an honest person. 88% say they will go for a person of character. All right? Then you begin to question the outcomes of the polls. You know, because we cannot take it in silo. We need to balance it across all other findings that are coming up and other okay. factors as well. And that's why we would um, look at it cautiously. But every poll is important. You look at it, you may be able to take something out of it. Mm -hmm. For example, the three top issues, the economy, jobs, and education, it's quite consistent uh, across the board. The economy is everybody's headache. As far as that is concerned, the business environment, which has led to a lot of businesses folding um, up. Um, we have Nivea that has left to Nigeria. 
we have even in the oil upstream, ENI has moved this West Africa operation headquarters from here to Ivory Coast. So you are losing business. You know, a lot of our cocoa is now going through Ivory Coast rather than here. And, and I'm sure that is why the government says that they have now increased the producer price. But increasing the, produce, the price alone is not enough because a lot of the trees have already gone down to Galamse, which we have failed to fight. So all of these would determine how the electorates make their decision. So kudos to him for what he's trying to do. But the other aspect of this and, and reacting to responding to Kofi who says that popularity, you know, is what's going to determine the outcome of the election. I bet to differ. Now, when we're in secondary school, you can have somebody in the class who is the spirit of the class, makes everybody laugh, everybody's happy, you know, they stand on the stage, they dance, they giggle, and all of that. But when it comes to determining a leader for the class, even class prefect or cardboard monitor, we don't go for those people. We go for the people who are temperate in character. We go for the people who are honest. We go for the people that we know we can entrust our exercise books to, and it will be safe. You know. How are you comparing that with the uh, uh, presidential aspirants? That clearly is also consistent with what Ghanaians say in the Afrobarometer. So at the end of the day, if you don't have character, and, and I'll pivot this on the late Professor Jechi, Harvard trained uh, philosopher, you, you know, who set up the Legon philosophy department, who said that in the Akan worldview, when we say someone is corrupt, we say the person is bereft of character i.e. Onisubain, Onisubain, that a person lacks character, and that is what corruption means in that worldview. If that is anything to go by, I don't think that uh, voters would trust President John Mahama, for example. Yes, on the record of this government, I don't think voters would trust al Haj Baumia on the issue of character. Who voters trust? al Martin, of course. On that score, he stands tall. Take him out and the rest are all the same. You know, and, and as we go about touring this country, as we go about campaigning, talking about the issues that matter, nobody believes that either President Mahama or al Haj Baumia can create jobs better than Alain Martin. Is that so? Nobody. Nobody believes that. Nobody should believe that. How, how do you come by? You are saying nobody should believe that or nobody believes that? Nobody should believe that. Okay. You, you know, because at the end of the day, who has a track record of doing that, of creating jobs? It's Alan Chamatin. Under who? Under? Under who? Uh, under which government? Of course, under the NPP government exactly. of have passed. So, uh, how are you, mm -hmm. I mean, isolating Alan Chamatin's um, achievements? as a job creator mm -hmm. from the MPP government. Thank you. I will not do the isolation. In the president's State of the Nations address, the last one he did, mm -hmm. right? He could only talk about meaningful 170,000 jobs that have been created by through the one district, one factory. This is a president selecting his best player in the whole pool. So at the end of the day, the track record has it. I mean, whether under President Kufo or under the current administration for the six years that he was part of the government, he has shown that he knows how to create jobs. He, he has shown, most importantly, that he knows how to use policy. And that's the most important tool that a government has to attract investment to create jobs. Many people forget that we have six global auto, automobile brands assembling cars in Ghana today, not because the government spent a dime. The government did not spend the peswa, but on the power of policy, he was able to attract those investments. So our, our engineers are now being employed. That is what you do to create jobs. And he knows how to do it. He understands the business environment. And the business community knows that he's the one they can trust when it comes to that. So the ordinary Ghanaian out there, knowing that he is honest, he's competent, he's got a character, he has the panacea of our joblessness would vote for him. If you look at the report strangely, it seems to suggest that among first-time voters, Alain Martin is not pulling at all. At all. That, again, raises some questions. Because about 80 to 90 percent of our core supporters are young people. Are they first-time voters? A large majority of them are first-time voters. Mm. Exactly. So, it, it, it calls to question some of the methodology and one. That's why so, we're you've not conducted your own research? We have been doing that um, over the past one year. 
uh, for to inform how we position ourselves in the whole process. Can you share uh, some of the do, data with us? That is for internal consumption. But what we do is we benchmark it against what Afrobarometer is doing, what um, other international organizations are doing, to see the consistency and where does in that what you It tells us that we have a lot more work to do to secure a first-time or a one-time victory. Okay. That is what it tells us, that we have a lot more work to do. 26 uh, days to the elections, um, we need to do more. And that is why, you, if you observe, in the last one month, you know, the campaign has been on the, on the road, doing so much, talking to Ghanaians, engaging people across the board, from Ashanti region to Eastern region. The running mate, uh, um, KOD, has been very busy around the candidate himself, very busy. When so, you said KOD for a moment there, for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, so, so that is that. Uh, so concerning that, that is what we have to say. But I have been worried at the way this free SHS conversation is being positioned by the government. Now, whenever a policy is implemented, it is part of prudent policy practices that within every five years it is reviewed. Okay. We are yet to witness that in the implementation of free SHS. It's been seven years going on eight. So when you have <laughs> people who are very obstinate about reviewing the process, and if people do not know the impact that the manner in which it is being implemented is creating. Let me share one example. Proud to free SHS, in every district they had educational units, right? Largely, the economic activity around education in the district was managed at the district level. So if you're a farmer in a particular district that has a secondary school, your maize is likely to be bought by the school to be used to prepare food. If you're a poultry farmer there, you're likely to be the supplier of egg to the school and a host of other business opportunities, carpenters, in terms of furniture and the likes. What Free SHS has done is to take all that opportunity at the local economy, bring it to Accra for centralized procurement. Most of which is done on the basis of sole sourcing, which Alan Chemati says he will outrightly cancel it from our procurement laws. It breeds corruption. So you are changing uniform and the contract is given to an individual. You say you want to supply gadgets to students, the contract is given to an individual on sole source basis. You want to do um, a certain intervention. So almost everything, even sardine, sardine, supply of sardine to secondary schools is procured at the ministry and distributed. That kind of economics does not work. Okay. It does not work. And what it does is that it creates poverty at the, at the local, local level, level because you draw economic activity away from that. Oh. Alan Martin will review the implementation of free SHS to ensure that local business people at the district level across the country get a chance to participate and to have their businesses uh, thrive and grow. Thank All you. right. Um, I'm going to read some messages and then we'll go back to the phone line, uh, Zoom, to speak to Musa Dankwa again. He wants to respond to some of the things that have been said here. Mani Nimani says, now please tell Courage to ask Alan to go and plant the sugar cane first and then we'll vote for him. All right. Uh, more mm -hmm. messages coming in. Uh, now, all right. With the greatest respect to our vice president, Alaji Baumia will never appreciate the scale of how disastrously he has managed the economy until he loses power. All right. Hide in his bedroom and reflect on why he lost. God forbid this man winning um, the elections in 2024. Uh, Master Planner from Kintampo says the free SHS needs to be protected and it can only be protected if we vote for Dr. Baumia and the MPP government. The NDC will collapse this life-changing policy because of jealousy and pain. They thought it was not possible, but when Nana Baumia made it possible, um, all right, hashtag it is possible with DMB, hashtag Baumia means business. Let's go back to the phone lines now and talk to uh, Musa Dankwa. Hello, Musa Dankwa. Yeah, hello. Yes, I'm, I'm glad you are still there. I, um, so, Kofi mentioned a poll earlier that you conducted in Kofi Chrome. Can you speak Ofori to Chrome. Ofori Chrome? I beg your pardon. No, no, no. Thank you very much. I, think, uh, I will take this chance to educate MPP and their communicators once and for all. And, uh, and indeed, for every Ghanaian who follows polls, 
and understands how surveys are conducted. When we do national opinion poll, the sample we deploy to any area, it is not to find out the view of that area, but ask the area's contribution to the national uh, perspective. So in December 2023, after the MPP primaries, we did a survey for national parking pool, which we deployed 130 samples in Ovoluku. That was the time people were angry with the outcome of uh, uh, Kennedy losing the election. So the date of the survey was very important. At that point, the level of support for Baumia among MPP was abysmally low. So we interviewed 130 people in that electoral area of the constituency. Remember, if you are doing the parliamentary poll or a poll of a constituency, you can't deploy 130 people and say that's the view of that constituency. Absolutely rubbish. Secondly, let's look at this in context. Among the people we interviewed, look, all the 130 people said Ghana was headed in the wrong direction. They didn't agree about that. Again, about 98% of the people interviewed said they disapproved of the way Ronaldo was doing his job at the time. This was an electoral area within the MPP stronghold. And then when we asked them who they intend to vote for, obviously people who were angry with the outcome of the uh, primaries, people who have said by 98% they disapprove the president. What would you expect the answer to be when it comes to who would they vote for? In statistics, we call something an outlier. Yeah. They are angry, so they are showing you how angry they are. And they will behave in a very extreme way. This we call in statistics an outlier. It doesn't mean that this is the view of the entire food group. They must learn this and learn this fast. What they are doing is just educating people, misinforming their own people, and that could end them in a bigger ditch come December. We are going to publish the entire report of Ashanti region in December that we put out there. They should go and see how unique Furukum is and come back. We've done everything possible to be transparent in what we do. But at least they should not be peddling falsehood. If they don't understand, they should learn. That's all we have to say. All right, Musa Dankwa, thank you so much for um, clarifying that. You, know I mean? you, you want to ask him a question? No, no, I, but I'll respond to him when he's gone. All right. Okay, so. Go ahead. No, wait. I didn't, look. You conduct your post. I also have the right to, to disapprove or to disagree with your post. And that shouldn't warrant an insult in, in anybody's, you know, ability to, to digest what you put, uh, you, you've put out. You spoke to his credibility. Yeah. No, I think that's no, why no, I spoke. Concerned. I spoke to the post that he conducted you, in Oforuko. You Oforico. mentioned his name. Of course, he did it. And you okay? spoke about his And I have the right to disapprove of it, okay? But if you respond in this manner, I mean, it's up to him. But eventually, I mean, the point is clear. Carries, can you please, please, but respectfully, no. Yes, courage, please. Please, sure. please, please, please. But he first interjects courage. me, and he cannot really, like, wait like really. Courage. That is the character of these people. Yes, and they as, think as, that and, they have he, the freedom to misbehave, misconduct themselves, to do as they will. And but you I are not like that. So when don't he started, that. I was quiet. Yes, it's okay. You interjected me. I'm interjecting you, and then, hey, hallelujah. Courage. This yeah, is your bitterness is okay. okay. you. It's okay. It's okay. You sit here allow, and allow an MPP communicator, Smart Sapon's wreck, and you are discrediting someone. No. Smart Sapon, who Courage. speaks for the MPP you have your in Ashanti region. You, you have call his post credible. You have your turn. <laughs> no, but this kind of dishonesty is 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 when, when too you have turn, you can say what you're saying. But now let's well, we try to get to you, you, let you the gentleman speak. It. Let the gentleman speak. You have your turn. Now let me double down what I said. Okay. And I'll make it simple and snappy and then you move on. I, I doubt his credibility as far as his research. Based on what? Based on what I see and what, what you, I read. What do you see? I have mentioned one to you. I've mentioned of Foruko. He can go. I mean, I've seen his response when we, we, we questioned that post. He has responded and mentioned the same words that he just used this morning. And I have the right to disapprove of it. And I'm saying I doubt his credibility. And that's a fact. He can't change that for me. Okay. That's your personal opinion. Oh, exactly. All right. That's fine. Um, courage. Yeah. I think it's become one time too many for communicators of. Wait, wait, wait. But now. Are you making progress? Because I was just making a quick. You do not determine how the show runs. You don't determine that. No, wait. You don't determine how the show runs. What was the issue? I'm asking whether we are we are coming back. Yes, we are back. But he just spoke. No, 
he ah, interjected. No, I'm just asking, are we making him. progress? Yes, we are making progress. And he also, just, when I was making my point, he interjected yes, me throughout. Yes, and we stopped him. And I allowed him to And you come back to him. And you completely and ended. Because I was making... I came back to him, because I told him to stop talking while you were talking. Go ahead and conduct it. You see, many a times, we get the refrain that communicators of... Uh, movement for change, the members, we are better people, yes. We are better against the wanton corruption that is ongoing. We are better against the situation of unemployment that they have plunged Ghanaians into. We are better against the destructive mm -hmm. policies that have been implemented that is leading to more poverty in this country. Of course we are better. We are better against a president and a government that is so full of itself as to be erecting statues onto itself. We are better. We are better against a government that is not honest with its people. So yes, we are better, and we are better against all of these things. And to the extent of our bitterness against these things that ordinary Ghanaians are suffering, we cannot. And we took a principled position to move away from a political party that has betrayed its own roots. What happened to justice? What happened to freedom? What happened to the advancement of democracy? Which is why the MPP was formed. You have betrayed all of that. Today, Mo Ibrahim Governance Index is saying that as far as our judiciary is concerned, it has lost its credibility by about 50 percent under the presidency of an MPP government. And we think that is fine. It threatens the very democracy that we are in that allow, allows you to sit here today to talk. And you think it should be tolerated. So this kind of extreme partisanship that has no interest in nationalism is what the movement for change is against. And that is why our principal, Alan Chamati, moved away and we joined him. So yes, we are better, and we'll continue to be better against these, f uh, uh, these things, irrespective of who is in power. Okay. Finally, finally. What? Kofi, you don't determine how the what show is, what runs. Is what, what is this? What, 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 what is it? No, what is it? Like, what's your Allow issue? her to run her show. No, what's your issue? Please, please you have the right to interject me, but please when I come point. in, you are making this. Kofi, Kofi, when he interjected you, I stopped him. <laughs> so <laughs> don't interject. Please, please end. You have just about one minute to conclude your point. What's your Thank problem you. this morning? Coffee. Why didn't sleep well? For every young Ghanaian listening to us this morning who is concerned about what? the joblessness, who is concerned so for about the lack of opportunities, who is concerned about opportunities even when it comes to advancing in your education as far as scholarships and other things are concerned. You have a golden opportunity at the post this year to vote for a person of character who will make sure that there's equal opportunity for all Ghanaians. And that is Alan Martin. Anybody who told you before that if the fundamentals are with the exchange, it will expose you. But seems to give a different meaning to it today because he has been exposed, cannot be trusted, and should not be trusted. Thank you. All right. I'll read a few more messages, and then I'll come to you, um, Elikim. Good morning, Na. This Musa Dankwa is fake and follows JM anywhere he goes. All right. Um, uh, good morning now. The largest job creation sector is the agric sector, but unfortunately, the government has collapsed it. <coughs> the Mahama Farmers Service Centers policy, in which district stopped with all farm inputs at subsidized prices, is another panacea to job creation. In addition to the 24-hour economy, both Mahama and Reset Ghana. And finally, um, this is more than just an election. It's a movement for a better Ghana. Let's be driven by selfless spirit and vision for a brighter future in deep commitment to our people. Let's put in the work to reach every corner and inspire um, all Ghanaians. All right, and that's from Elliot texting us. Now, um, Elliot. <coughs> yeah, now, uh, let me first quickly say that uh, Mr. Musa Dangwa is known Ghanaian and has never, under any circumstance, been seen following President Mahama anywhere on the tour or wherever. Uh, I am not even sure he has even visited the president's office before. And this is something I'm saying as a matter of fact. You see, when polls of this nature are conducted, it is instructive to remind my brother that when they do not understand what review means, in al Haji Baumir's own submission, he said he intends to what? Improve free SHS by simple <laughs> cognitive measures. <laughs> Kofi sitting here, I am aware, is a UN diplomat. I don't know how he was selected. As we sit here today, his credibility is so indicted, not only by himself, but even by his utterances. When he feels that he has the, the right 
to dent the credibility of someone. I am just finding news now. I didn't know until my brother just did that this doctor or professor nice Smart Sapon is a known party communicator or oh, patron yes. or what have you. So you see, in the end, this is X splash in your face. You present a party communicator to us to say, this is credible. No wonder he was consistently mentioning only that name and no other. He knew no other poll star in this country or researcher apart from a certain uh, doctor. What, Smart what, what, look, the Ghanaian watching us today especially even the Christians and the Muslims, are so worried that President Akufuado, who is becoming like Bokasa, who promised Ghanaians, however, that, look, I prayed to God and said I will build for him a cathedral, and there will not be a pest war of the taxpayers' money spent on it, had ended up spending $58 million to sink a hole. Not only do they, do they, do they drill, drill, dig a hole, they had flown a flight all the way to Israel to possibly buy a stone, fly down here, probably even pay duty and handling charges, and come and bury that stone there. How many years now? Eight years. He's even gone a second term and has not done anything about that. $58 million. And a young man who sits here today and want us to believe that they are doing well and infrastructure-wise. Do they even understand what 12,000 kilometers of road is? Even compared to their own president before. You see? So free SHS alone is not just the panacea. But the Ghanaian knows, and we have stated it clearly, President Muhammad says, look, he will review it. If al Haj Baumia is saying he's going to improve, why is he going to improve? Again, it's only an educated illiterate who will not understand the reason for improving something. Because you must review before you can actually improve. And so if you do not review, what exactly do you guys intend to improve? Unless there's some discord there, somebody's preparing the note, and someone is also saying something else. Then that aside, look, LGBTQ. al Haj Baumia is a Muslim. Islam frowns on that. Christianity also frowns on that. President Muhammad from the word go has made it very clear that look, he says no to this. See how difficult it took al Haji Baumia? It is very difficult. And it's a major concern that he needs to address moving forward. So when we are talking about issues, address the issues and stop going around and talking about credibility. From the flag bearer down to everybody and any communicator who sits in for the NPP, there's no credibility with any of them. And that is a sad thing to say that I find young people of my caliber who are putting their own integrity on the line, tarnishing themselves, their image, just for al Haji Baumia, who himself has no credibility. All right. Thank now, you so much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, that's our time. Kofi, you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, at the end of I'll the day... I'll give you just one minute. Okay? It's okay. At the end of the day, we've, we will have three individuals who have had the opportunity to be public servants, serve this government in one way or the other. One as a vice president and a, a president, and one as a vice president and one as a former minister. And when you look at the records of these individuals, especially res with respect to where they were given their respective roles, you realize that Dr. Mahmoud Bormia stands tall in all of these people. And I believe that if Ghanaians, can you just... <laughs> and I believe, you and I believe that if Ghanaians <laughs> give him the opportunity to leave this country in 2024 moving into 2025 again and i say it and i repeat it because That's i'm passionate time. about it that the protection of the free shs tvet will be assured Got when it. we return ndc there will be a collapse of the free shs and this is a fact not a rhetoric it's a fact of matter that they will cancel. You, you just and said it was an them. assumption that you had. <laughs> no, no, I am I, saying now it's a matter of fact. I'm telling what, you now. What changed between and now and a few minutes ago? No, no, no. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you as a matter of fact because of some of the things that I have gathered while they were talking. Right. That indeed, if All you right. pay attention to the, the things that they have said, it gives me the conviction that they will cancel and collapse the free SHS. Wow. And that's a fiction, and, not a fact. And we, and we bought all, right. all the community day SHS right. that you are using all to right. recruit the people. We, we are going to have to say goodbye <laughs> to you now. And thank you so much, gentlemen. I'm Frederick Kofi Ameao, MPP National Communications Team Member, Elikem uh, Kotoko, Deputy National Organizer of the NDC, and Courage Nobi, Deputy Director for Policy Movement for Change. This has been big issues. Thank you for sending your messages in. Today I tried uh, to read as many messages as possible. I'm sorry for the ones I could not read. Please forgive me. Now, step into a world of Dewa 59 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct, Dewa uh, Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, dial star 446 hash. Pick any number between 1 and 35 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times to your stake. Win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m.
Ellie Bear simply love day watch up money. At 10 a.m., dial star 446 hash. Choose any number between 1 and 39 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake. Play at dewa-nla.com or dial star 446 hash. If you need any help, Please give them a call on 055-625-9249 or 053-247-9879. That's the word from Dewa this morning. When we come back, we'll bring you more. We just might bring in a live coverage of that Supreme Court hearing on the substantive issue and the um, issues on the floor of Parliament with regards to the four vacant seats or otherwise. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.